just ferried this 1936 Ryan ST from uh, Urbana, Ohio, down here to uh, Gunterville, Alabama. Uh, I believe it's 8 Alpha 1 airport identifier. It was like 347 nautical miles. It took me uh, three legs to get here. But I'm going to do a little walk around. I'm not an expert at all with Ryan aircraft, but I was uh, blessed enough to have the opportunity to fly this, uh, this ST down here. Uh, over the part of the Appalachian Mountains. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little walk around. The little history about it, I guess this airplane has been owned for about 25 different owners, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But the owner uh, that lives down here, uh, he's not a, a pilot, a current pilot right now, but he collects, uh, he just loves Ryan. So he bought this airplane and it actually will be on display for people to see and hopefully it will go to different fly-ins and uh, shows so people can actually enjoy the beauty of this airplane. Uh, the previous owner, Ted Teach, was out of Dayton, Ohio. He's owned the airplane for a number of years and you will uh, probably see me talk with uh, Doug Smith, who's also out of Dayton, Ohio. Doug and Ted uh, worked on this airplane for over 10 years to restore it the way you see it today. Uh, Doug was uh, Ted's mechanic. So Doug has pretty much climbed over every centimeter, not an inch, but every centimeter of this airplane in 10 years and pretty much restored everything. I remember seeing this airplane probably 10 years ago when they were just starting on it. Uh, Doug was making uh, new molds for the, uh, the covers for the flying wires. Uh, he's working on the wheel pants and the wheel fairings. Everything was hand done. Uh, the cowling was all is all brand new, everything like that. So it, it's a very unique uh, airplane. They've only built five of these STs, and this is the only one flying today. So I must say it is an honor and a blessing to get to fly this airplane. I was very nervous uh, just flying it just because it's such a uh, unique airplane. I didn't want to damage it, and, uh, you know, it just it would be horrible and... It'd just be a horrible situation for me and for everybody to, to, to see this. But anyway, uh, you can see it's polished aluminum. Uh, it's very beautiful. It has not been polished since 2016 when it went to Oshkosh and won uh, Grand Champion Antique at EAA Air Venture. Uh, it had a lot of dirt and dust on it about a week and a half ago. Uh, we moved the airplane over from New Carlisle, which is just north of Dayton, over to Urbana had dirt and dust all over it, and then about three days ago, they polished it, or they didn't polish it, they actually uh, just rubbed it down with some compound and uh, used soap and water on the wings, and this is what it looks like five years, no polish or anything, and this thing is beautiful. You can see yourself in it. So, uh, one thing that's unique about this ST, it has a Manasco 125 horse, four, four-cylinder inline inverted engine. Uh, originally it had a, uh, I believe a 90 horse or a 95 horse Manasco. Um, now I'm just letting you know from the experience I've flown this, this airplane is not a, uh, is a ground lover. It, it likes to stay on the runway. So with 90 horsepower, I can't imagine flying this with two people. Uh, even with two people on 125 horse, I would say it's very marginal just depending on your runway conditions, temperature, you know, density, altitude, and things like that. Uh, it cruises about 100, 105 miles an hour. It holds 24 gallons of gas. There's two gallons of oil um, that you have to service the oil on the top of the engine cowling. Uh, the fuel tank is one center fuel tank that is in the fuselage, and it's 24 gallons that gravity feeds right into the engine. Um, there's the sh fuel shutoff valve, you're on a main tank, and then you can go into a reserve. So the main tank, there's like some stay tubes down in the fuel tank that actually allow you to burn probably about, I I'm not exactly sure, but I would say probably about 18 to 19 gallons of fuel. And then if the engine would quit, then you can go to the reserve and it will actually use all the rest of the fuel out of that tank. So that would give you about 45 minutes of fuel um, you know, for reserve fuel. Uh, with the 24 gallons, for what I've noticed, it burns about probably between eight to nine gallons an hour on fuel burn, which is not bad. 
So the wings here, it's all covered in dope and fabric, and uh, I, I'm not sure what process that Doug uses. I forget, but it's beautiful. I mean, you can see yourself even in the paint in the wings. And then, obviously, the fuselage and everything is aluminum, perfectly polished, and uh, go from there. Now, these uh, flying wire covers here on the wings, I, I do remember seeing Doug uh, making the molds for each one of these. Each one is, is actually a little bit different than the other, so it took a lot of work to make things symmetrical, and it's just, like I said, it's a beautiful plane. It's a one of a kind. Another thing, these flying wires are humongous. I, I swear this airplane probably has about a 15G uh, positive G loading on them because these flying wires are they're larger than my new standard or my travel air. This is what makes uh, Orion very unique and elegant, is the, the uh, wheel pants and the wheel fairings. Now, it, it looks like there's no suspension whatsoever, but it does have suspension. It's, uh, you know, there's uh, oleo struts in there, and it works pretty good. When you're taking off, the airplane kind of wants to sway uh, back and forth uh, with crosswinds and things like that. It is a little bit scary, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was pretty scared flying the airplane just because I didn't want to damage it. Here's a, a unique feature here. This is the oil shutoff. And when you go to fly the airplane, you turn this. Doug made this tool, but you just turn it there, pull this out. Actually has a, a Zeus uh, fastener wrench on the end. But when, when you pull this out also, turn it to on, it pulls a pin that's right up next to the magneto switch. So if you don't uh, turn the oil on, you cannot turn the airplane on. The magneto switch will not go to on at all. So if you get in the airplane, you go to try to start it, there's no uh, mags cannot go to on. So this is a good safety feature. You pull it out, like Doug said, put this in your pocket. This is the key. Put the key in your pocket, and you always know that the oil is on. See these uh, exhaust stacks, each cylinder, it's four cylinders, pretty basic. This is something that's aftermarket, but uh, this is a generator. The airplane was designed with no electrical, but uh, you know, be more modern and everything, so you don't have to hand prop the airplane. It does have a, a starter, a generator. There's actually radios in the aircraft also. They put this generator on to kind of make it look, it's, it's really cool. So it's a wind generator, you turn it on, as we fly, it turns, it generates power, keeps the battery charged, so you can operate the, uh, the uh, radios and the starter. Like I said before, uh, Doug made the, pretty much the entire cowling, used the patterns, and when you see this Manasco engine in here, I mean, it's, it is so tight, it's unbelievable that, that they've designed and built this airplane around an engine like this with quarter inch clearances or even less uh, to make it fit in this cowling. The airplane is so sleek, it, it's, uh, it looks like it, it'll do a million miles an hour, but it's only, like I said, about 100, 105 miles an hour airplane it cruise. Got a Cincinnati wood prop here. I'm not sure what the pitch is. Uh, if you look here, you can see the Manasco engine. And we can come right around here. This is where you service the oil. You use this Zeus fastener, you pull that up, the cap comes off, and actually it's just a tank that sets in the top of the, on top of the engine. You can look down and see the oil. Um, here's where the, the fuel is serviced. It has a fuel cap, okay? This is the uh, pedo. I mean, it even looks fast. So it's, it's really, really cool. The airspeed seems to, to work pretty well when I'm flying. Uh, you know, coming for a landing, I'm usually hold about 70 miles an hour. Uh, put in the flaps, you know, be about uh, full flaps, I think is 25 degrees. And I hold about 70 miles an hour. Short final, you could probably be about 65. And then 
uh, thanks to Walt Bo, who owns Orion STA. He kind of briefed me on what to do with the airplane and how to fly it. But uh, you know, I, I do full stall landings with it. It handles very well doing full stall. Um, I haven't really tried a wheel landing except on grass, and uh, it, it works pretty well. But doing a full stall, you're able to get the tail wheel on the ground, get better control of the aircraft. Another thing, this doesn't have uh, the Cleveland wheels and brakes. It has the actual stock wheels and brakes or Goodyear brakes, and they work really bad. Um, I don't even know if you really consider them as working. But what it is, it's a piece of uh, bronze and a piece of steel. Uh, one's a disc, one's a rotor, and they just rub together and create friction. And there's three, I believe, three of them in each wheel. And they, they work, but it's, it's really, it's not something that stops the aircraft quickly and it doesn't really hold the airplane all that well either so we can come on around this area here you could get a better look at this uh, paint it's just uh, it's just a very elegant beautiful paint job the airplane is just very elegant uh, you can see here the ailerons okay we got the flaps Also, for takeoff, um, I, I put a few degrees of flaps in. Uh, Walt told me to do that, and uh, it works really well. Another thing with the Ryan, if you ever flown like Champs or Cubs, uh, when you go to take off, you want to hold the stick forward, get the tail up uh, pretty much as quick as you can at the lowest speed as possible. And this is not the case in the Ryan. One thing uh, Walt told me, um, he said, no matter what, keep the tail down on the ground a lot longer than you planned. He said the worst uh, experience he's probably ever had with Orion is getting the tail up too early. And I would say that's probably a, a very true statement. I've noticed uh, if, the, if the tail comes up prematurely, uh, you get a little gyroscopic precession, P factor, all this stuff kind of blends in together and the airplane wants to start yawing around on you and you don't have a lot of rudder authority to be honest with you. So. Uh, taking off, I hold a little bit of back pressure, hold the back pressure in there a lot longer than I would you know, anticipate, and then ease forward uh, with down pressure, and the tail will come up, and actually the airplane will track very, very straight. I, I haven't landed the airplane in some crazy crosswinds or anything, and I, I guarantee you I wouldn't fly it in a lot of crazy crosswinds. The landing gear are very narrow, so it wants to feel like it's it's tipping over on you a little bit. So you, you really have to be on top of it and not having brakes, um, you know, I'd say really good brakes, it would make it very, very difficult in a crosswind. So uh, let's come back here to the tail. You see the, we got this stabilizer and elevator. There's uh, elevator trim on each side of the elevators here. There's a hand crank on the uh, left side of the fuselage. You just crank it down. It's like a little window, and it works really well, uh, very smooth. Whatever Doug did to, to uh, rig all this stuff, everything works very, very smooth. When you put the flaps down, there's actually a little handle in there, and that's one thing unique about the A to like the STA. This has a hand crank for the flaps. You just So uh, clockwise, is bringing the flaps, I believe, down, or putting the flaps down, counterclockwise, brings the flaps up. And uh, if you're not really sure, you just start cranking one way or another, you can see if they're going up or down. We got the rudder. You got the beautiful fairings here that uh, blend right in from the fuselage to the rudder, and our Ryan uh, logos and things like that. All right, so this is what it looks like in the cockpit. It's very tight fit. Um, but to get in the aircraft, it, it takes a little bit of work. You can't have real big, broad shoulders or anything like that. But once you get in, everything um, kind of fits pretty well. I felt a little tight and cramped up. It, if the rudder pedals were out maybe another inch or so further, it had been a little easier. But uh, as you can see here, this is the elevator trim, how you can just rotate it. Okay. This is the throttle, normal throttle positioning. And right over here on the right hand side of the fuselage, that is your flaps. So the flaps 
they rotate with a bicycle chain. So it's, it's a bicycle chain and uh, Doug said when they got the airplane, the airplane was so out of rig, it would uh, they put the flaps down and lock at one position, you got to go the other way and then you go the other way again and it might go down a little more or not come back up all the way. So uh, he did a really nice job uh, rigging that. There's five point harnesses in both fuse or uh, both cockpits. So uh, you got hooker harnesses here, five point harness. There's a five point harness in the front cockpit area. Uh, another little thing that's kind of kind of cool. You know, Ted had this little area for maps, so we'll keep that in there. We have our carburetor heat. Our mixture, we have a little circuit breaker panel. Here's our master switch, our generator, and then here's our pushed um, starter to get the aircraft started. Also, uh, here's the radios. We've got a transponder and then a comm. Here's a little uh, clock here, which I used. I did fly a two hour flight, and that's about the limit that you want to probably fly this airplane leave uh, some reserve you know actually it's probably like a good 45 minutes to an hour reserve if you're burning you know eight gallons an hour but just the standard instrumentation or compass and things like that but uh, here's another thing if you can see the rudder pedals and the brakes there's hill brakes so there's the fuel shut off and we have the fuel off right now but if it goes horizontal, that goes to the main uh, fuel tank. And then if we take it 180 degrees from where it's at right there, it goes to reserve on. And that will actually allow you to use all the fuel in the fuel tank. And that is what you would use if, if you run your main tank dry and you need to get to an airport within the, the next 45 minutes or so. So that kind of wraps up everything here with the Ryan ST. Uh, I hope I didn't misspeak on some of the history, but uh, it is a unique airplane, and I appreciate you guys watching this, and thank you. Thanks to uh, the owner and Doug Smith uh, for allowing me to fly the airplane down here. And you guys will see it uh, at probably some events and shows, maybe down in the southern states and who knows where else. But until then, blue skies.